tonight to help fight the heroin addiction problem in Hamilton County. It's a community advisory board made up of recovering addicts and their parents. Not on your sides. Tom McKee is live with who's on the board and how you can apply. Tom? Well, Lower Price Hill is one of the many communities in Hamilton County that has an acknowledged heroin problem. They know it. And that's why members of the Heroin Coalition came here today to announce a new community advisory board. Now, some of the people on that list, on that board, rather, you'd expect to know. But others, well, that may just surprise you. If you saw Samantha Frazier and Martha Hill walking down the street, you'd never know that heroin brought them together. Frazier is a recovering addict. I got my uh, wisdom teeth pulled in and just kind of got a prescription, and it, it really just... I kind of just fell in love with it. It um, made me just feel like this totally different person. I, I wasn't self-conscious. I didn't have any issues. I wasn't sad or depressed or angry or lonely. But drugs put Fraser in jail, and that's when Hill began writing letters to her. I just wanted her to know that I wasn't passing judgment on her and that um, I loved her and that God loves her just the way she is, and he's a God of second chances, and she could have one if she wanted. It was the time behind bars that jolted Frazier into treatment because she'd been in denial. I wasn't alone anymore. I had people to love me and surround me, um, give me rides because I don't have a license, um, you know, just, just to help me and be a good support. That newfound friend was Hill. If this was my daughter, I would want someone to love them and, and to invest in them and to help them in whatever way they could. Now, Frazier has joined the advisory board. This doesn't just affect this generation. This is going to affect generations to come. She wants to give hope to others who've walked in her shoes. Okay, how can we stop this? How can we help? There's too many people dying. I've lost a ton of friends lately. Um, and it's just, we got to figure out what we can do together to help these people. Well, topping the list of things to do that this board wants to do is get more funding for treatment. So how can you become a member of this advisory board? Well. I've got some information that I just tweeted out at Team McKee that will help you make connections. Tom McKee, not on your side, live in Lower Price Hill. All right, Tom, thank well, Candace, you. we are live here about a quarter mile from the crash. We're on State Road 39, keeping an eye on I-70 traffic, westbound traffic. When that will reopen it is not reopen right now, but state police have been saying for about a half hour that it could reopen at any moment. Now, what we are learning, what we have seen here along I-70, this is a four-vehicle crash involving, yes, a school bus full of high schoolers. They were traveling back to Missouri from the FFA convention here. 23 kids in total were on that bus. Seven of them were injured but are expected to be okay. Now, the other three vehicles, a white van, a semi, the driver in that semi, minorly hurt, and a budget rental truck. And in that budget rental truck, a father and his 19-year-old son headed back to Utah. Police say it was that 19-year-old who was killed. He was in the passenger seat of the truck, and it appears their vehicle slowed down for construction, but the semi behind it did not. As traffic was slowing for NDOT doing their work, uh, the commercial vehicle driver failed to slow, struck the budget renta van in the rear, forcing that van into the rear of the school bus, uh, ultimately killing the passenger in the budget rental van. The semi then veered and ran the white van off the interstate back live here. You can see they are rerouting traffic here at I, uh, sorry, it's at State Road 39 and I-70. If you are along State Road 39, you will not be able to get on westbound I-70 here. Uh, Again, traffic on I westbound 70 still not back open, backed up for miles. And Candace State Police say there is a clear message here. What happened? A key reminder of how important it is that you always keep an eye on the road. You are paying attention to the vehicles in front of you because they can slow down at any moment. This crash could have been prevented. Reporting live from Hendricks County, Ann Kelly, RTV6. Good morning. Shots fired at a Shawnee quick trip overnight. This happened near 75th and Schweitzer. As 41 Action News reporter Sarah Plake found out, this all started when the officers tried to arrest a man on a felony warrant. So, Sarah, is he in custody right now? 
No, police were not able to arrest him. The uh, suspect is still out there. Police are working to find him right now. They're using quick trip surveillance, and this all happened here behind me where police still have that area taped off. A Shawnee police officer was following a car and ran the plates, finding out the owner has a felony warrant out. He pulled the car over right here in Quick Trip parking lot and saw that, that a Lenexa officer was pulling in to go inside as well, and that's when things escalated. The Shawnee officer flagged the Lenexa officer over, said, hey, can you help me contact this guy uh, involving the warrant? They go up to contact this guy. A struggle ensues. Um, the Lenexa officer falls down as the person who had the warrant was starting to back the vehicle up. The Lenex officer falls down and discharges his firearm. Right, so we're learning that the officer did mean to shoot. We don't know if the suspect is hit or not. The suspect is in a blue car, and we're hearing that he was last seen getting on I-35 North. The Lenexa officer who shot his gun is now on paid administrative leave. That's just normal protocol. And now Johnson County investigators are stepping in to finish that investigation. Like I said, taking pictures, looking at surveillance to see if we can track this guy down. In Shawnee, I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News. Good evening to you. Just into our newsroom tonight, new video of a man's deadly confrontation with Tulsa police. A witness posted this cell phone video on YouTube. We've frozen the clip just before police opened fire, but we've left the audio up so you can hear what happened. Here's a portion of the full video you can watch on KJRH.com. Two works for you reporter Brian Miller has been covering the shooting since it happened. He joins us live near First in Utica with more of that video and what witnesses and police are saying tonight. Brian? Well, just minutes ago, literally, they cleared up this scene and finally opened the stretch of Utica where this happened. Now, witnesses say that it was a homeless man who was Native American and that uh, they actually captured part of that on the cell phone video we're about to show you. This video posted to YouTube shows the moments before and after an officer opens fire after first tasing the man. No reason to walk around at night, but they just tased him and shot him three times. Later, our camera captures crews performing chest compressions on the victim. Moments later, the ambulance pulls away. They did tell him to drop the knife, but he wouldn't drop the knife. His knife's over in one location and he's dead in another location, so explain that. Police say it began when the suspect pulled a knife on a couple selling a car in a nearby lot. At least two people called 911 and officers responded to find the man walking around with the knife. Police wouldn't say how big the knife was. Maybe a three inch knife. It's a very small pocket knife. I mean, all over a pocket knife. Police say you can't compare this deadly shooting with others because each situation is unique. Every shooting is different. Every, every officer involved shooting, there's no uh, two officer involved shootings that are alive. Well, as this investigation continues, police say they're going to check the dash cam video of both of the officers who originally responded to this call to see if they captured that on video. Meanwhile, witnesses say that man seemed to be drunk, but of course, police could not confirm that. That's also part of this active investigation. For now, reporting live in Tulsa, Brian Miller, Two Works for You. And going in depth here in the U.S., a total of 509 citizens have been killed this year alone by police. Data from the Washington Post shows most of those shot by police are male and white. At last count, 282 were armed with a gun, 88 with a knife, 35 with a vehicle, and 35 we were unarmed. Another top story tonight: beat up in her own home by two strangers tonight. An 83-year-old woman is recovering after a terrifying home invasion robbery. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Clifton French live outside the town and country community where this happened with the person who actually stepped in to help. A look at how common these kinds of crimes are in that part of town. What? Yeah, you know, there have been dozens of burglaries and robberies in and around this mobile home park that's now behind uh, this school bus right here. But this latest crime rises to a whole new level. These are the faces of two men accused of robbing an 83-year-old woman. According to deputies, it was this 18-year-old man who took the robbery to a violent extreme. The arrest report says Ricardo Marquez Torres broke into the home, punched the elderly woman several times in the face, and drug her around by her hair before stealing a safe with thousands of dollars worth of jewelry inside. 
30-year-old Thomas Mendez Urbina was the driver, waiting in his car for Marquez Torres to return with those stolen goods. I was way over the line. Alexander Morales lives just across the street from this mobile home park. This place isn't the greatest, and, you know, there are crimes here. There have been other instances. Robbery is pretty common here. We did some digging. It turns out Alexander is right. In the past year, there have been 26 burglaries and six robberies within a half mile of the home invasion. In July, there was another home invasion robbery inside of Bay West. In January, a home invasion robbery only a few blocks away. The victim of this latest crime and her family did not want to speak with us on camera, but say they're grateful their loved one wasn't killed. I don't know how this old woman is doing and if she'll recover from this. And they're also thankful for the maintenance man who works here. He actually chased down the robber, uh, tackled him to the ground, and held him until deputies got here. Unfortunately, the property management company for the uh, trailer park here would not allow him to speak with us. I'm reporting live in town and country. Clifton French, ABC Action News.